Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and in this video, we're gonna talk about Docker. After watching this video, I promise you that the concept of the Docker will be absolutely clear to you and by the end of the video, I will also share one experience, the personal one, where Docker was absolutely lifesaver for me. So let's get started and talk about what is Docker. Whenever a product is being designed, the first and the only goal with that product is I want to solve a specific problem or somehow I want to reduce the friction that users are currently facing in that problem. So in order to understand the Docker, first and foremost, we need to understand what is the problem statement that Docker is trying to resolve. Whenever a developer develops any product, there are certain issues which are probably almost every time occurs. One of that problem is whenever you are designing a project, it works absolutely fine in your machine, the developer machine. But as soon as that project is being moved on to the production state, maybe onto servers or maybe somebody else's computer, maybe your friend's or maybe your team manager's computer. In that case, the project usually fails to work with the same performance or same optimization or the same level of working even when that project is moved from one place to another place. Although here we are talking about the big scale projects that include something like Node, Django, Python, JavaScript and all those stuffs. But just to give you a bare minimum basic example, whenever you develop any website using PHP or maybe ASP.NET, whenever you work on that project and move that project onto the web server, there are definitely some uncertainties that occurs. Maybe your images are not being loaded properly. Maybe the path is a little bit different or glitchy in some of these cases. That is a classic example when everything works on the developer machine but as soon as it moves to another place it doesn't work like that. So the classic problem is it works on my machine. This further brings the classic debate of developers saying it works absolutely fine on my machine you can come and check and while putting that project onto the production or any other machine the other guy says hey you probably forgot to mention some of the dependencies that you might have installed while working on some other projects and that's why the problem is occurring. So this debate is pretty nasty. Docker is designed to specifically address this exact problem. It works on my machine. First and foremost, Docker is just completely a different thing and it's compatible with almost any programming language or any project that you are working on. It's like almost a sheet of paper on which you can put up anything. It's almost like that. Docker allows you to have absolutely sealed airtight container and these containers are the absolute heart of the Docker. These containers wrap up your entire code and these are absolutely portable. The portability is one of the absolute charm of the Docker. Now you can take this container and wherever you are going to put this container, it's gonna work absolutely and exactly like how it worked on your machine. Not only that, Docker also allows you to have social containers. What does that mean? The containers are shared just like your social status on your Instagram or Facebook. It allows you to publish these containers onto a social platform. One of the classic example is whenever you are learning MySQL, installing the MySQL can be very challenging. I'm not talking about the PHP MySQL package. I'm talking about just the core MySQL. It's one of the most challenging thing to install onto your system. And I personally have felt in the boot camps that while somebody is running Windows, Mac and Linux, it's not an easy process to do so. But that process can be done frictionless with the help of Docker. So Docker is a software that allows you to create these container and these containers are not just any container. They are super powerful and are super packed up and consist a lot of things. These containers are packed up with your code, your dependencies, your configuration, some of the processes that you are running, some of the networking information that you are running and in some of the special cases, it also consists of the chunk of some of the operating system that is responsible of tweaking out some things in your code. So in order to summarize, we can divide this Docker into three main essential things that it does for you. Number one thing, it's a client side application program. You can just install the Docker and it can does all the things for you, including designing a container for you and you don't have to worry about anything. All of your codes and config will be packed and you can just move it anywhere you like. Docker can also act as a service and can be deployed onto any server so that you can take your container and can be deployed on any place you like. Docker also act as a social networking 
platform just like you share anything you can share your docker image so that whenever somebody wants to start at a given specific checkpoint it can start there and last but not the least docker is also a company that does and manage all of this for you now as i promised in the start of the video i will share some of the personal experience with the docker as well so here we go now once i was teaching this amazing class of the students where we had to install some of the c library and our goal was to interact with the mongodb using the c drivers and some of the libraries now in case you have worked any time with the c you know it's a nightmare because c is not an easy thing to take down and especially when you have to interact with the drivers of mongodb you need to install a couple of more things not just gcc but a ton of other libraries that need to be installed now our goal was to learn that how we can use these drivers into the C++ and the framework that we used was Crow. Now Crow is not an easy framework to install, deploy and just even starting a hello world in the Crow. So what I did for saving some time uh, for the entire student and for me in that bootcamp was to deploy a simple Docker machine of the Crow and I taught the student that how the initial basics of the Docker works and within a few moments they were able to download my socially shared Docker machine of the Crow with the hello world already configured and processed everything into it and we were just on the go. So the training that could have used just my entire week in training the student about how to configure the crow for the first time, it just saved me a lot of time because the goal was not to understand the crow but rather to understand the API integration of MongoDB and C++. I'll share the link in the description below. It's a little bit outdated image that I created probably a little while ago. It says hello crow and it's almost nine months old but still works absolutely like a charm. So in case you are interested in that, uh, I'll post a link in the description and in case you are interested to take a class about uh, Docker and the initial basics of Docker, let me know in the comment section that I'm interested in Docker and I'll prepare some of the tutorials on the Docker that will get you quickly up and running with the Docker. Yeah, I kind of love Docker. There is no reason to hate it. I absolutely love Docker. And one of the most important thing about this video in case you are new here, hit that subscribe button and I'm going to surely catch you up in the next video. Till then, keep writing amazing code and join me up on Instagram too. Bye-bye.